Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. Can we, can we like, we can't sample, what like, that? what's the longest you can sample me? without yeah. having to ask for copyright? Are you ready to rap super good? Can we make this our intro for just the headers? Like, 9.25. Alright. Whoa, kid it! I'm on a mission. Sliding down 166 underneath leather seats, loaded pistol. I'm an entrepreneur, so to speak. I could do it in my sleep. What you dream about is how I'm really living. Got the freak on my line. Trying to put me in her kitchen, tell her mama she fine. But I can't sleep after I hit it. How I see it getting tired is a luxury. Try to eat it, busy bees, a body like a bumblebee. But after I hit it, back to the mission. Mission, mission, mission. Bust it open for a real nigga, be specific. I'm in the street, bit pimping like a zip it. Everybody eat, cause we all on a mission, on a mission, mission, mission. Bust it open for a real nigga, be specific. I'm in the street, bit pimping like a zip it. Everybody eat, cause we all on the motherfucking mission. Whoa, whoa, so good. Wow, wow, whoa. That's really whoa. good. Wow, 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 wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hunt me good, baby. Hunt me long, hunt me faster like it should, baby. No cap, no nap, wish I could, baby. Out of Paris, but a slap in the hood, baby. West End, yes, and I'm on a mission to get it. I got a flick in the titties. I order bottles and bottles. I'm putting on for my city. I'm from Atlanta, so they say I talk foreign. Light years ahead, true story. Hey, I'm on a... <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. I'm going to put that in the show. Sick. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in the show. In ten. And welcome back, everyone, for another episode of Just the Headers. Uh this is coming out soon. It's like you, it's almost like you got a double header just the header this week. So good for you, listener. I know you're feeling good about yourself. So, yeah. Um, tell the people who you are. Uh, so the primary host of the show. Without further ado, here he is. Introduce yourself. <laughs> the guy who doesn't do any of the talking. <laughs> uh, I'm Jesse Broke, and with me is my co-host, who is just a as big of a part, if not bigger, uh, D. And oh, uh, we're we're about to bring the crypto news to you guys. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, (laughs) This show, you keep, you put this show on your back though. And (laughs) no. And you know, this is, this is everybody. This is everybody coming together. This is, you know, it's starting to feel like a real community show. You know? I mean, it is speaking of which tell people your uh, little science experiment. Or not, or you, or not. I guess. Oh, you you disconnected a little bit there. Oh, yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. What? Tell tell them about your science experiment this week. Oh, so uh, I was I was playing around with the idea of making these pre workout gummies because I saw there really wasn't like an option for this product on the market, and uh, I'm playing around with it, seeing if I can uh, make some cool little beans shaped gummies or some like cubes and they're going to be called like the power cubes so you just uh, bite bite into one of these and it'll be like taking uh, an entire monster or like three cups of coffee Ooh, can you call it power cubed and put power and put a little three above the r whoa and put power in parentheses i like it i I also want to do like a different shape like there's this other shape like i have this coffee bean mold and I know that, like, some people, I don't know, not not some people, everybody likes Dragon Ball Z and Senzu beans. Like, so they're like the little pick-me-ups. So I'm going to have, like, some Senzu bean-shaped pre-workout gummies. I'm going to make them really, really strong. So, mm. I don't know. It's going to be awesome. I want to feel the universe. I told you this in my <laughs> muscles whenever I take this. I used to take pre-workout. I was worried about liver cancer, but now I realize, like, eh, fuck cancer. So, like, I'm ready again. <laughs> I'm ready again. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna try and figure out the figure out the um the packaging 
and then uh, just make a whole batch and then send them out to some people who want some. Well, you know, I want some. And can we can you make a limited edition with uh, little gummy bears with six pack abs? <laughs> That'll Please. be like the next batch. That'll be the next batch. Nobody out there is doing this, which impresses me. It impresses me like just how little people do. But <laughs> no, let me let me I guess let me put that into context. Like you have a good idea. And you you th- you think someone's doing it, but they're not. And you're like, wow, I should do it. But then you just don't. You know what? Let's call it Gary V. Real quick. <laughs> oh, God. We're going to call very Gary V. And see what he has to think about this. Real quick. <laughs> oh, I can't get my phone to make the phone noises. <laughs> burr, burr, burr. Ring. Ring. It's a great sound effects. Yeah, yeah, it is. Ring. Hey, what's up, Scary? (laughs) (laughs) That's not even how he sounds. Hey, Gary. Um, so I I have this problem. What's your problem, man? Um. Every time I think of an idea and I notice that somebody isn't doing it, I know I could do it. And then it would kind of like change things for my life. You know, I would maybe get paid to do it. And I just never do the idea fully. Well, why not, man? What's your fucking pro? What are you trying to do? What's your fucking idea? Well, I want to make pre-workout gummies. Go fucking make them. What are you doing standing there? What are you doing standing there asking me questions about what you should be doing, man? There's no fucking rules in the universe. You make the rules, bro. You make the rules. Look at me. I wear my hat on the side of my head. That's not the way it's designed. But fuck designs, bro. You go out there and make your gummies. Make your gummies. Do it right now. Open up your phone. Open up your Instagram app right now. Take a picture with me. (laughs) Take a picture with me. All right. Now put that picture on Instagram and say, I'm going to make gummy pre-workouts. And then at me. And I'll like it. Yeah, at me. (laughs) Congratulations. I just changed your life. But you changed your life by coming here to ask me to change it. And congratulations. You're the captain of your ship. All right, man. Thanks. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate it. I got Instagram right here. So. And scene. And we will never talk to Gary V after that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I kind of took that and ran with it, Jesse. Um, it's what you do best. Hey, man. You should call me a... Um, relay runner because i take the baton and i run with the baby so this is a show about cryptocurrency headlines <laughs> jesus <laughs> so uh we're gonna start to talk to you guys about the headlines in the cryptocurrency industry uh in the past uh, week and we hope that you um like what we have to present to you so let's get into it let's fucking do it (laughs) that's exactly how it sounds and you know it god i haven't i haven't seen any of his videos in like a while have you have you watched any recently um no but i watched a few a while ago and i was like oh so he's like new tony robbins yeah yeah and that's about it yeah. um whoa man and google now you could see the history of an edited cell wow technology moves fast man oh i'm not even looking at the right article let me what month are we on currently 7 11 
I like having this never ending list instead of having different tabs for different dates. Yeah. We're in the June tab, but this is July. June? No, it's June. No, it's, it's July. We're in the June tab, but this is July news. And you know what? It doesn't even fucking matter, man. <laughs> oh, this is my favorite. This is articles written by Noel Atchison, everyone's favorite extra in the movie Home Alone. Uh, Libra isn't a cryptocurrency. It's a glimpse of a new asset. So I do make fun of this woman's appearance, and I shouldn't, because you shouldn't make fun of anyone's appearance unless you're a comedian. Which you aim to be one day. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, Noel Atchison is a veteran of a company analysis and a member of Coindesk's product team. Uh, and 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 she's awesome. So, Noel, you're awesome. So, uh, coming from or- coming from an organization so tied to the question of identity, it is surprising that Facebook's Libra coin seems confused about its own. I'm starting to really like her jive now. It's a good rhythm. The organization has chosen to brand Libra a stable global cryptocurrency, and the label cryptocurrency has been replicated by media around the world. Yet Libra is not. A cryptocurrency. Don't get me wrong. Those of us in the sector appreciate the global attention given to the concept since the announcement. But in this case, the definition matters beyond semantics. Uh, it will affect eventual use cases and regulatory treatment. It could also transform how investors view both stable coins and blockchain based securities going forward. So what's in a name, Jesse? Mm-hmm. What's in a name? Yeah. What is in a name? Nomenclatura. <laughs> While definitions vary, one key characteristic of cryptocurrencies is their resistance to censorship. Oh, there we go. For this, they need to be decentralized enough, and I can't stress hard enough that that is in quotations, to prevent any one group from deciding who gets to transact. Libra does not yet fulfill that criteria, and although the foundation has said it plans to move towards a more decentralized system over time, doing so or not is entirely in its hands. It's got the whole world in its hands. It's got the whole world in its hands. (laughs) Let's get some. It's got the itty bitty babies in its hands. Jesus. It's a good song. Uh, so security payment, new packaging, expect the unexpected. That's basically what she's trying to get at is that this is not cryptocurrency, but it's a brand new ball game. It's a ball game where anybody could say, Hey, I got a cryptocurrency. Do you want it? So, yeah, I mean, Facebook's been in the news. Jesse, I don't know about you, but I'm really tired of hearing about Libra. I mean, the the articles are going down. Now there's like only 30 in a week versus like 100 or 200. This is all true. Here's a good sign of adoption. We always like those. I like signs of adoption. Singapore's tax agency proposes to exempt cryptos from the GST. The Singaporean. Oh, this is written by Wolfie Zhao. Mm. I'm trying to think of something that would be good, like to market with the last name Zhao. Zhao Pao Zhao Brow. That's what he should do. If he started an eyebrow uh, threading company and called it Zhao's Brows. That's what you need to do, Wolfie. The Singaporean government's taxation agency is proposing to remove goods and services tax from crypto transactions that function are aimed to function as a medium of exchange. So that's neat. The Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore, also called the EROS, published last Friday an e-tax draft guide for treatment on what it calls the digital payment tokens, seeking to exempt any entity dealing with such digital assets from the GST liabilities. If the draft guide passes into legislation starting from January 1st, 2020, 2020, not 2020, the following 2020, 2020, man, the show 2020 is going to have a great year next year. 
It's good for them. Anyways, sorry. The following changes will take effect to better reflect the characteristics of digital payment tokens. Lemma 1. The use of digital payment tokens as payment for goods or services will not give rise to a supply of those tokens. Lemma 2. The exchange of digital payment tokens for fiat currency or other digital payment tokens will be exempt from GST. Oh, boy. The e said the e-tax guide is still in its draft form and that the Ministry of Finance will be holding a public consultation from now until July 26 on the legislative amendments for digital payment tokens. The draft guide also sets out detailed parameters on how digital payment tokens are defined. A. Expressed as a unit. B. Is fuckable. Sorry. Fungible. C. It is denominated in any currency and is not pegged by its issuer to any currency. D. It can be transferred. Excuse me. The D. It can be transferred, stored, or traded electronically. E. It is or is intended to be a medium of exchange accepted by the public or section of the public without any substantial restrictions on its use as consideration. This is very progressive. Did you see that France is uh, trying to tax the tech companies based on their revenue? Uh, so you mean get their tech companies to to pay taxes? You mean based on their revenue and not their profit? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. So they want revenue share? Yeah, they want like three percent. Oh, those are dicks. Yeah. So the U.S. is trying to figure out how to protect, you know, Facebook, Amazon from France. And I think who else is doing it? Maybe Britain as well. And I think some, yeah, I think the whole U.K., the U.K. as a whole and, and, and Britain are going to try and levy some sort of tax on revenues for tech companies. Mm. Yeah. So what that means is they have evidence to show that tech companies are underpaying their taxes, so they want to get them up front. I guess so, yeah. Hmm. And that's going to affect their bottom line enough that the U.S. government's trying to step in. Yeah, but why would the U.S. government step in? Because they don't even pay taxes here. So what the fuck? Why do we care? Or do they in different ways? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's usually when I'd expect you to do like the clickety clacky of of Google searching, but your fingers are tired <laughs> today. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this is beautiful. We haven't heard this name in a while. Here's an article. XR3 execs new mission. Run a hundred trillion dollar fund trade on private blockchains. Wow, this guy is is some kind of wonderful. So this article is written by Ian Allison. That's two first names. Brian McNulty. I I automatically don't like him because of that name. <laughs> Let's listen to his quote. R3 is keen to fuel companies like us, and we couldn't do this without them. You could say I've drunk the Kool-Aid, but to be honest, I'd only do this on Corda. It's the only one that's a fit for purpose. And having been there for three years, I can see how we can work with some of the other builders of solutions. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That was a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Most things that are going to go into production in banks probably need the enterprise Corda. So I'm building an enterprise version from the outset because I know that's what we're we'll, where we'll end up. This guy's a douche. He's not Your building term. anything. Huh? He said he's not building anything. Yeah, R3 is like the most stagnant damn program in the all of crypto. I think they made a big splash when they started, but they don't do shit. <laughs> all <laughs> right. Monday. Monday. All right. First article of Monday. I'm just going to read all, all the headlines and I'll pick which ones to dig into. I like so the first style. article of like Monday, it. Hyundai's token company partners with Casper labs to build a proof of stake blockchain. Boo. Crypto Ponzi scheme says it has no cash to pay out to upset investors. Ooh. 
uh, SEC FINRA explain why they're taking so long to approve cu- uh, crypto custodians? Mm, it's because cronyism. Tron CEO responds to viral video showing police protecting affiliate offices. Mm. NYAG Bitfinex Tether served New York residents longer than they claim. All right, so let's uh, let's do the Ponzi one first. That seems fun. Uh, here we go. Daniel Kuhn, uh, Bitcoin wallet, a lucrative South African quote unquote investment scheme used to attract hundreds of investors a day, many of whom clamored at the company's doors to invest. Now the company's shuttered office is attracting hundreds of protesters demanding their cash back, according to Lady Smith Gazette. I don't know what that is. Uh, as of July 4th, the enterprise that many regulators and media had begun sus- suspecting of operating as a Ponzi scheme shut down. The firm enticed investors with promises of 100% returns in just over two weeks by reinvesting customer deposits in cryptocurrencies. Mm. These same investors want to know where their money went now that the company closed. Bitcoin wallet founder Sveli Skumza Mabatha admitted to the Lady Smith Gazette on Saturday that he doesn't have any more cash to pay out to clients. I don't know what's going on. I don't know online or how this system works. It has to be workshopped, he said. I don't know what workshopped means. Um, Before closing, Bitcoin wallets had grown so popular that Mabatha stopped taking in deposits of less than 5,000 rand or $350. $350. At the time, African news agency speculated the firm received more than R2 million in cash deposits per day. Um, so what would that be? Do the math, D. What's five what's two million divided by five thousand times three fifty? Two million divided by five thousand? Yeah, so what's the, two that's million what, six zeros two thousand divided by five two hundred. 200 times 350 750 is it six uh 750,000 dollars a day yeah. yeah uh an african at the time african news agency speculated the firm received more than r2 uh, million in cash deposits per day representing quote the largest daily cash flow in the whole of lady smith a former paramedic mbatha claimed in a june radio interview that his operation was above board though efforts by the ANA to confirm the legitimacy of the business regulation uh, registration pu- uh, proved futile. Um, the news agency spoke with market regulator Financial Services Conduct Authority, FSCA, which reportedly stated that the registrar's signature in Bitcoin Wallet's business certificate looked like it had been forged and needed to be investigated. Despite these reported concerns of potential fraud, hundreds of South Africans had invested in the cryptocurrency upstart. Mbatha certainly made it easy. So there's a 10% administrative fee. He said 15 working days to receive 100% returns. Uh, it says uh, ANA previously reported Mbatha had become a local celebrity, drove luxury cars, and even had a police escort. So it says he doesn't have any more cash. Uh, Two million. Yeah. Divided by five thousand. Yeah. Four hundred times three fifty. That's more than. It's one hundred and forty thousand. Is that wrong? Oh, it's two hundred, not or four hundred, not. Um, wait, no, it's a hundred. Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, yeah, I did all the math wrong. Yeah, one hundred forty thousand a day. That's a lot of money. In South Africa, probably. Even I, more so. I, let me tell you something, Jesse. If somebody came up to me right now and said, hey, would you like $140,000 a day for five days? I would say, if you give me six, you got a deal. Hmm? No, I'm kidding. I would say, just give me one day. I'll take a day of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, five? I get the five? I'll take the five. I'll take, no, t- where do I sign? Ooh. <laughs> You need my soul. Uh, <laughs> what would you say? Like, so you're saying you need my soul? Be like, no, I'm good. 
<clears throat> um, all right. So I don't really think any of the articles are really that great. All right. Tron's my turn. CEO. Nope. You just yeah, said your it. turn. It's my turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all you. My internet's acting fooey, by the way. So we're going to try to give this a shot. So. Okay. Safety without silos, why businesses will learn to love public Ethereum. Publish, Polish crypto exchange BitMarket suddenly shuts down. <gasps> surprise, surprise, not fucking reading that one. Binance cuts time needed for Bitcoin to Ethereum deposits and withdrawals, meaning volumes picking up and they trying to make that money, honey. Kowkow claims this new blockchain is 15 times faster than Ethereum. Not reading that. You suck. Multicoin Binance Coinbase invest in startup keeping private keys secure. Might read that one. And John McAfee offers to build Cuba's first cryptocurrency. cryptocurrency. Actually going to try to burn that headline in a dumpster. So let's go on with safety without silos. This sounds neat. I wish John McAfee would go away forever. Not in a death kind of way, but in a like, just leave humanity. We're going to do fine without you. Like in Judge Dredd, when they banish people into the desert, I feel like we should do that now. I feel like we should start that practice who would you banish into the desert? Who are my options? I don't know. I'm just saying there's got to be a human right now you'd be okay with not seeing or hearing from ever again. Who is that person? Uh, and somebody that we know, not like a, not like somebody that we don't know. Oh, somebody that we know? Yeah, not like somebody that like crossed you in middle school on the on the basketball court and you're still butthurt about it. Oh, uh, okay. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I can get along with everybody in Slack. No, no, no. I mean like a celebrity or something. Oh, okay. Uh, celebrity. Wow. Celebrity. Hmm. Who do I not care? Bruce Willis. <gasps> you want Bruce Willis to walk away in the desert? Are you just saying names of people that you could just think of at the time? Absolutely or you really not. don't like Bruce Willis? No, I just don't care. Couldn't think of anybody other than Bruce Willis. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. He did make Willow. Not Willow, but Rain Willis. Not Rain, but... You get what I'm saying. I got um, you. Wow, Bruce Willis, of all people. It's because he looks weird when he shoots pistols. Hmm. No, not really. You just don't like the guy? No, it's not that I don't like him. I just think there are better action actors than him. So he deserves to be banished into the desert? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> You'd make a terrible judge, Jesse. Electric right, chair? Are you would. sure? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, put him out of his misery. Yeah, but why, though? I mean, because, I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, who who would be me, yours? Oh, the Kardashians. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a pre-Ray pre J. It's a good one, I guess. I think, I think society fundamentally changed when it raised a porn performer to the heights of celebrity status. I think society at its core changed at that point in time. Mm. And that's what Kim. Nobody realizes this, but Kim Kardashian got put on the scene for sucking Ray J's dick. Excuse my language, but that's why she's famous. Like enough time has gone on and she's done enough rich people stuff with her rich people money. But like she wasn't even famous at all until Ray J was like, you know what I want to do? Record you getting going on my dong and then she became like super duper ultra famous and we were like yeah she's great for that it's like, that's what? that's it that's what made her famous yeah she was not famous until after that video hmm. have you seen that video jesse no i can't say that i have i can't say that i have either <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. So you know, like the the Instagram link that I posted today. I do. Yeah. 
uh, or that that YouTube chick where she's selling bathwater. Yeah, Belle Delphine. Yeah, like four million plus followers on Instagram, and she makes she has like five thousand Patreons, and she the minimum uh, tier is like five dollars. Oh wow! So she's making quite so, a I bit mean, of money. And that's just Patreon. That's not including YouTube or Instagram sponsored posts. So she's making a lot of money. She's making a lot of money. Millions of dollars a year. Oh yeah. Well, good for her. What does she do? Uh, she pretends that if you, I think, uh, subscribe to her Patreon, she'll send nudes and stuff like that. But she doesn't. I guess that's what everybody's saying. Wow. That's so genius. she's scamming a lot of people. Yeah. I feel like we should try that. You just need to be a girl, D. <laughs> and that what you I, oh now i know what conversation you're talking about because you were mm-hmm. like you said oh man i wish i were a gamer girl born in this era and i was like or hot gamer girl and i was like you mean you just were a hot girl born in any time in history and then yeah you, no and i was like no but i didn't say no i just moved on oh. but yeah no it's like people can make so much money um yeah from kind of like i was watching some youtube videos about like a bugatti a, a bugatti uh gosh what is it have you ever woken up in a new bugatti oh god that song no but like she she was test driving a bugatti but it wasn't like a real bugatti it was the or it was the um gosh what it was it Anyway, the long story short, she's some blonde chick on YouTube who just does like shitty car reviews and car review YouTube channels are getting mad because she's literally not doing a good job and she's just taking advantage of her looks in that industry. So, mm. I mean, well, should we do something like that? Can you thirst trap women? I don't. I don't know. I th- I mean I think the 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 easiest thirst traps for women are probably like those romantic novels, right? With like the dude who's roided out on the cover. Yeah, my mom reads those. Yeah. yeah those are th- that's an option. And we should go hard in the paint on trying to thirst trap women and see what kind of creative ideas we come up with. Bet you we could come up with some good ones. I got a feeling they're not as. I I got a feeling that prudence is in an all time low in the woman community, and they're much more willing to be publicly thirsty than ever before. Mm hmm. Yep. It's true. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. What makes you come to that conclusion? I looked up the search results on the statistics of women searching porn, and uh, Uh, yeah, what did they look? They 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 look up harder harder genres of porn than men do. Okay, and facts. I know this. I have a personal story, but I can't share that. But yes, I would agree with that side of the lines with my personal experiences. But go on. Uh, but yeah, if you look at some of the statistics that are shared about uh, the demographics, people yeah, but watch see, that's porn. not like public thirst. They're they're searching for these things in the privacy of their own laptop and bedroom. Okay, but like so dudes use... will goon out like that Gillette commercial. Like they will say, like, "Damn, that is an oh, attractive okay. lady." But I don't think girls are like, "Dang, look at that guy's pants fitting right." Fit and right. Uh, I mean, they do that, right? They do? I don't know. Don't man. they? It's never happened to me. I know that much. We have to manufacture that. Do men get catcalled? I'm sure they do. Like the really, really hot men. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. I don't maybe they, they just it's not likely in public unless the woman is extremely confident, right? Got to be like in the privacy of like a bachelorette party. Mm. 
D in Jesse's quest to thirst trap women. That could be a legendary. The saga continues the in the saga next. Continues. We should just walk around with a microphone like, hey, do you ever get thirsty? Yeah, I drink water and stuff. I'm like, I'm not talking about that kind of thirst. You know, I mean, what there are there, there are YouTube channels based upon the premise of doing stuff like that that have millions of subscribers. Yeah, but where are we going to find the time to go around and ask women if they're thirsty? Man, you know what? We just need to watch some more Gary Vee. That's your problem. Yep, that's right. He'd be just telling you, yeah, you know what? You got a great idea. Why don't you go out and do it? I know we you said find we the time. weren't going to call him again, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You want to go thirst trap women? Fucking do it, man. Fucking do it. <laughs> Why Anyways. does he sound like 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 20-year-old? Like California surfer, dude. I don't know. That's how he sounds in my head. That's oh, why okay. I can't. That's why he. That's why he doesn't inspire me. Because all I hear is "fucking do it, man, do it, go out there and build your dreams, build out of concrete and steel, go." Anyways, yeah, was, we got. Yeah. We went on wait, a wait, hell of a tangent. From? I don't even fucking know what newsline we're on anymore. Uh, we are on Tuesday. Tuesday. It is your turn. Damn. Ain't that a bitch. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Fucking do it. Okay. Uh, Multicoin, Binance, Coinbase invest in startup keeping private keys secure. This is written by Kristen Kim or Christine, if you want to say it wrong. Blockchain startup Taurus has an impressive cap table. And by cap table, we're talking about VC stuff that you guys probably don't know about. But maybe you do. But maybe you don't. Cap table. The private key management firm recently closed a 2 million seed round led by Multicoin Capital. 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 The fundraise also saw participation from notable investors like Coinbase Ventures and Sixth Horizon. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Accomplice and Terminal, Binance Lab invested $500,000. This is just a big circle jerk article about, sorry, excuse me. This is just just a big article about how Binance uh, is investing in a company to keep private keys secure because apparently people can't do that for themselves. So here's an article. Here's 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 a quote. When we tried, when we tried to introduce the crypto ecosystem to other friends, we found that they were really amazed by the concept of decentralization. Uh, so, but when it came to actually starting to use decentralized applications and interacting with the blockchain itself, it was quite a struggle to get them started. Yong added, "They had to under understand a little, a lot of difficult concepts such as public-private keypads." Uh, we just wanted to abstract that all away for new users so they could be left with a simple, secure, as well as seamless solution. Uh, wow. So this is actually kind of this is a big deal. We should look into this tourist company. So let's clickety-clack on that. Clickety-clack. Don't go back. You see what JT just posted in general chat? Justin Timberlake in the Slack? Of course Justin mm-hmm. Timberlake is in our Slack. Yeah. Him and uh, Jessica Beale. Your turn, Jesse. Wednesday's news. All right, here we go. Wednesday. Let me just drag my scroll bar. All right, Wednesday. So I'm going to read through the headlines again, and then we'll dig into a couple of these. So first headline for Wednesday, Facebook says it won't launch crypto in India due to regulatory issues. Uh, Second article, Coinbase is in talks to launch its own insurance company. That seems interesting. I'll look into that one. Uh, blockchain firm Diginex may soon list on NASDAQ in the U.S. report. It's interesting. Two, Visa Blockchain Capital A16Z back $40 million Series B funding for crypto custodian Anchorage. Uh, I'll check that out. Out two, Sia Network raises $3.5 million from Bain Capital to become Crypto Hulu. That's interesting, too. Commercial debt market goes live with backing from Coinbase Ventures. Interesting. Okay, Uh, and then the last one, Samsung quietly releases a blockchain SDK for dApp creation. So Wednesday, it's got a lot of pretty nice articles. So 
I'm going to take a look into Coinbase launching its own insurance company. Let's see what this is about. And so Ian Allison, takeaway. Oh, that's so nice the way he just wrote the four bullet points at the beginning of the article, so I don't have to sift through all of this. Um, so the takeaway is Coinbase is exploring plans to set up its own, quote unquote, captive insurance company, industry sources said. At the start of the year, insurance broker Aon began establishing captive companies in the Cayman Islands, working with a handful of cryptocurrency firms. Aon says a captive structure can help firms get access to additional coverage at more reasonable prices. Insurance for crypto remains scarce, and major exchanges Kraken and Hobie say they simply self-insure by setting aside coins to cover losses from thefts or hacks. I wonder if that would... Uh, that probably would see a huge uh, investment of capital into crypto through Coinbase if Coinbase was able to legitimize some sort of insurance, some extended insurance for crypto on its um, platform. That'd be pretty dope. That may be the next big play for um, exchanges. Yeah, uh, man. There's big money in exchanging. There's big money in being a middleman. That is a fact, dude. That is a fact. That just, just makes them feel more secure with insuring your crypto because right now nobody insures crypto, really. So, um, All right, blockchain firm Diginex may soon list on NASDAQ. Okay, I don't really care about that one, actually. Uh, Visa Blockchain Capital A16Z back $40 million Series B found round for crypto custodian Anchorage. So Anchorage, a company providing crypto custody services for institutional investors has just raised $40 million in a Series B funding round. Um, okay, here, quote, our mission at Anchorage is to advance institutional participation in the digital asset class, and this funding will improve our ability to do precisely that. To have the support of pioneering organizations like Visa and Blockchain Capital is a validation of Anchorage's vision for the emerging economy of digital assets. Uh, second quote here, the end of the article says, quote, we believe Anchorage is the safest place to hold digital assets. Having modernized crypto custody beyond physical coin, uh, physical cold storage with advanced security engineering. We are leading this investment because we believe Anchorage will have a transformative impact on the financial world. Uh... Anchorage has been designed and built for the next generation of crypto assets. Its custody solution, something of a darling among Silicon Valley types, had been included in the Libra Association, an entity, you know. So that's interesting. I wonder how they're what the protocol is. I wonder how people how, how the security works with Anchorage. If they're saying it's um it's better crypto custody beyond cold storage. What is advanced security engineering? Those three words. What does that entail? Might be something to keep an eye out for. Um, CN Network raises three point five million from Bain Capital to become the Crypto Hulu. Let's see. Boston-based Nebulous, makers of the CN Network for decentralized data storage, recently closed a three and a half million dollar pre-series A round led by Bain Capital Ventures along with participants like Bessemer Venture uh, Partners and Dragonfly Capital Partners. So Crypto Hulu, let's see. You don't have to be a host, uh, and then in brackets, node, in order to put data onto the SIA network. Vorik said it will be a comparable experience to using something like Hulu. So how does that work? Hmm. Uh, oh, here we go. Um, both... Okay, so stepping back, SIA's token model has set it apart since SIA coin launched in 2015. The network's native SIA coin must be earned through mining. It wasn't distributed as part of an initial coin offering. As such, Vorik said the Nebulous-owned hardware maker Obelisk sold $15 million worth of SIA miners, roughly 6,000 machines, before it ceased sales this month. Both host node operators and storage space quote-unquote renters lock a little SIA coin in a smart contract escrow, including the transaction fee, to ensure the operator gets paid for keeping data safe. If the host loses the encrypted data, he or she forfeits those tokens. Meanwhile, a small fraction of that transaction fee is automatically allocated to 10,000 SIA funds. Hmm. The wallets, these wallets are the startup's sole monetization strategy for the network, charging roughly $1 per terabyte monthly. Plus, Nebulous sends fractional ownership of some CFUN tokens to investors as an additional capital 
source beyond equity. Um, in the SIA protocol itself, in the blockchain code, there's a requirement that every time you make a file contract, 3.9% of the coins in the contract are distributed to the SIA fund holders, Work explained. Um, I'm not really sure like the technical details on SIA. Do you know how it works? No, I hear a lot about SIA, though. It's It might be about that time I pay attention to it. Okay. So... Uh, Filecoin is its competitor. Let's see, incumbent rivals made safe. Yeah. Oh no no no. Uh, file base. Incumbent rivals. Yeah. So I guess it's made safe. Filecoin and Sia then are the biggest competitors to each other in the decentralized data storage space. Um, all right, so the next article, do, do, do. I'm going to briefly cover this commercial debt market. I'm just curious what this is about. Cadence, you know anything about Cadence? Uh, what's it called now? Yeah, a it's cadence called is Cadence. When you walk, like, it's like, no, 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 go, go, go. Cadence. no, 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 seriously, D, though. Like, the company. <laughs> I don't know anything about it, man. Okay, all right. So Cadence is apparently uh, an Ethereum-powered marketplace for commercial debt. Um, the startup, which recently secured a place on the Bloomberg terminal for its pools of commercial loans, is now open to all institutional and accredited investors. Such users can now contribute funds to packages of short-term loans that help businesses cover payrolls, inventory, and other ex- unexpected costs. Uh, how are they doing this? Again, I don't understand the technical details, but I guess Cadence is a platform that offers a a way in which people can lend out private short-term loans to businesses. So, mm, I see it here. And that's, I see it here. It's, a, it's a built on Ethereum, I guess. So. If you look a little bit further down, it says uh, a modulation or inflection of the voice. and also says a sequence of notes or chords comp- comp- <sighs> comprising... The close of a musical. You just, you just, you just feel like that. You just, you're in a mood today. (laughs) All right, last one, and it's all yours, and we're wrapping up. (laughs) Samsung, (laughs) shut up, D. (laughs) Samsung quietly releases a blockchain SDK for DApp creation. John Biggs. All right, here we go. So Samsung quietly released access to what they're calling Samsung blockchain that, quote, helps discover or helps developers to manage blockchain accounts easily. Simple enough. Sadly, the rest of the description is a little bit more opaque. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, uh, okay, you do like a partnership registration. Looks similar to like the Apple uh, app development registration process. I don't know. Right, okay, so let's read the process here. You register your Samsung account. You download the AAR. Develop your application by implementing the blockchain SDK. Apply for partnership. You're good to go, man. Oh no, no. Here, this quote. Um, in addition, DAP does not need to make separate types of transaction that follows coin types by themselves anymore. Wrote Samsung. Quote: The SDK offers a payment gateway for cryptocurrency remittance. With its UI. To use this payment solution, DAP needs a key store. With this, Samsung Blockchain SDK links users not only to the Samsung key store, but also to any external cold wallets as well. Um, so, what it looks so like is they're trying the, to. The private gather... key is stored on Samsung's cloud, essentially. Wait, what? This, yeah, private... that. And they're just gathering a bunch of database data on uh, companies. Wait, what is the Samsung Blockchain key store? Because apparently they're saying it's not they it's not the same thing as like a Samsung server. I'm not really yeah. sure what that means. No, it is. It's the same thing that Apple uses with their key store. It's just a it's just a dedicated server dedicated to to housing like a very specific type of encrypted data. Oh, so is that just just wiggling him his way out by saying but like the wording of what he said to ensure complete security the private key and information located in the samsung blockchain key store are never saved to a samsung or external cloud nor is it seen by the device's android os they wrote so where the hell is that like what is sam i'm going to google this real quick 
Go for it. I got to get my charger time. for my lappy tappy. Your lappy tappy. Okay. Um. Let's see. Built in blockchain wallet to store what's in the app. Here, uh, here's an article from dailyhodl.com. An inside look to Samsung blockchain key store app for the Galaxy S10. The Galaxy. So in the recent S10, whoa, 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 whoa. leak reveals the Samsung blockchain key store app, which appears to be a cold storage wallet for cryptocurrencies. Okay, so it's a cold storage wallet on the phone. That is weird. Yeah. Wait. They said that. Okay. Okay. That's what it is. So it's a cold wallet on the phone and the Android OS doesn't have access to it, supposedly. So. Interesting. Well, so I'm going to hand the baton over to you. Well, before Thursday. I found this interesting article that we didn't even put on there. Listen to this. Okay. Consensus may finally fix its chaotic employee equity situation. What Ethereum the co-founder problem? Joseph B. Lubin, head of the head of the Brooklyn-based venture studio Consensus, is moving to appease employees who say they're fed up with unfulfilled promises about equity disbursements. Out of seven current or formal Consensus employees interviewed by CoinDesk, four said, "Because you know, seven people is definitely a good sample size." They felt misled about the company's employee share options. Although most employees are verbally and contractually promised they will soon have an opportunity to obtain consensus shares, few receive it or are able to use it, said the sources, all of whom spoke on the condition of anonymity. Anonymity. Oh my god, stop, please. Okay. You were going to do that? <laughs> How did you know I was going to do I that? I couldn't stop you ahead of time. It's just I like, got too late. How did you know? Uh, if it if a word if a word stops with the e sound, it's game over. Now, after a year of con- content, consensus is imminently expected to announce an official policy regarding poi share options, according to one of the sources. Consensus declined to com declined to com declined to comment for this article. We will update if we hear back. Here's a quote. People will bring it up in town halls and Joe would say, we're working on it. One source said about Lubin's repeat verbal assurances. What we're working on it means is they're trying to give you value in a way that doesn't give up theirs. That's what that means. Lubin's repeated verbal assurances. I didn't know how important equity was or that I should fight for it. I definitely felt taken advantage of in that sense. Mm, so the the seas are a rough at the mesh that is consensus. It's chaos. No clear line of authority or accountability, one former employee told CoinDesk. It's shocking. It's shocking when you build a company with no hierarchy or organizational structure, how there's no hierarchy or organizational structure. Blows me. All right. Um, that was crazy. Uh, so Thursday's news. Thursday. Jesse, what's something you did today? Productive, unproductive. Just let's go with unproductive. Unproductive. I played some Counter Strike. Jesse plays Counter Strike. I could narrate your life. You could. You could be like the Morgan Freeman to my Jim Carrey. Yeah. Jesse makes pre-workout gummies that will light up your soul. Uh, so here's some articles. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell compares Bitcoin to gold. Yay. 110 crypto exchanges are reportedly trying to get licensed by Japanese regulators. SEC gives you now's Ethereum token props Reg A approval. Oh. Police in Spain say Bitcoin ATMs expose problems in Europe's AML laws. What? China should prepare digital wand to counter Facebook's Libra XPBOC chief says. 
PBOC means public blank of China. Fidelity Digital Assets is hiring 10 more blockchain and trading experts. Because what do you know? It's doing exactly what it said it was going to do. And lastly, Bitcoin mining rig ASIC prices. UTM source equals RSS and percent UTM underscore medium equals feed. 10 out of 10 decrypt articles. That's a D. De- <laughs> That's what it's supposed de- to be about. It's supposed to be about uh, mining rigs going down in price. No, going up in price. Even though somebody was trying to sell me a five eighty, like multiple five eighty rigs for six hundred dollars. And Jesse, do you know why that is? They're going up in price. Why ASICs are going in price? Because this yes. is about this is about Bitcoin ASICs. Do you know why that is? They're going up in price. I mean, it depends on what type of ASICs they are. If if it's like the older version, I'd be like, that's retarded. I would never buy that. Exactly. Doesn't make sense. Never, but why Bitcoin ASICs period are going up in price is, my friend, we are approaching Moore's Law. What that means is, as we you already know what that means. I know what that means. Yes, huh? you're right. Yep. So that's why the price is going up, which means mining will naturally become more decentralized as we hit Moore's Law's limit, which means... Bitcoin is still king. I did several longs blink there. Several long blinks there. And you'll be able to mine with anonymity. Sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I want to read this article about the SEC giving you now because I thought they had only given Blockstack um, pr- regulation A approval, but apparently it's giving another one regulation approval. And that is you now, uh, and what you now is props. It, props is an Ethereum-based blockchain token that integrates with streaming platforms like you now. I actually interviewed props on. Oh wow! I think I interviewed props on um, on announcements. I did. I've used this app. Oh wow! I'm glad that they finally got it together. It's basically like a hip Skype. I have this on hip my phone Skype. still. Let me see this. Anyway, uh, you now, which developed the props blockchain, announced today that it will begin rewarding content creators with props for in-app activities that drive community engagement. Users will also begin to receive tokens for engaging with the platform. You now will begin by distributing a total of 187 million tokens to users and creators, according to an SEC filing. Uh, so reg a plus is a way to reward early investors as well as galvanized users around a product by giving them a vested interest uh, at launch each token has valued at 0.1369 according to the filing so it seems to me that they're making laws or refabric refactoring laws to account for the inevitableness that is cryptocurrency and blockchain technology so if i could say anything right now there's some things that i've said and i'd follow the d timeline i've said that the old price patterns that were broken last year which to which these are wild assumptions by d (laughs) can i just can i just ask you something yeah why do you care to be like right about being uh, about being like an oracle it's fun (laughs) i'm just curious it's fun man um, it is it is and it plays into the stereotype of old wise black man i'm okay what? with being that <laughs> i'm okay with being that um so fall the d assumptions on the d timeline d assumptions oh on the d line um pat- price patterns broke last year which told me wall street has control officially um, Wall Street wanted the price to drop enough to where they could get a good entry point somewhere right above the last all-time high. Um, they're going to keep using this to generate profits for them. And now that they've generated the profits, they're taking those profits and turning them into companies that could then afford compliance and regulation. And they're doing things like this. So they create these circular economies in which they benefit a thousand percent because they're funding all of it. So, beautiful beautiful it's beautiful right isn't isn't it because to get all of this stuff costs a lot of money and a lot of the successful token 
token um uh token events let's just say token events in 2017 still didn't have enough funding to um afford stuff like this but what was happening was this this big trek up this year in price uh when wall street grabbed a hold at the end of 2017 into 2018 they're now they're now basically deploying those funds and we get stuff like this so it's a beautiful world man why do i want to be the oracle i don't know man it's fun to to like you know try and predict what's going to happen due to bits of evidence no no i i I do but like i i like seeing trades like i want to see how you're profiting from this. Like, I, I wish people were more transparent, but unfortunately nobody's doing that. Yeah, because you don't, you can't be transparent. And I mean, I'm as transparent as I've always been. IBM guy was transparent. I dollar cost average a modest amount of my cash flow. No, 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 no. I mean like, well, I guess people with like more complex trading strategies. Yours is just long-term dollar cost averaging yeah yeah so uh yeah um hodl plus can't be more transparent than that (laughs) uh next article props is pretty neat by the way it is Uh, no people are doing like hodl minus right yeah, a lot of people are. Um, Fidelity Digital Assets is hiring 10 more blockchain and trading experts. So Fidelity is all in on crypto. They have been for a while. Anna Badakova looks like Jen A from uh, Forrest Gump. Jeez. She does, though, doesn't she? Google it. Google Jenny from Forrest Gump. Pull up her picture. And then pull up Anna's picture. Almost the same person. Whoa, that's a noise. You got all up in the mic when you did that. Wait, hold on. Yeah, you see it? Uh, yeah, I give you that. It looks similar. See? I know my shit, You're right. man. <laughs> my shit. the simple things in life um so let's go to this last article about bitcoin mining rig so um yeah so uh bitcoin mining rig prices are soaring bitcoin's rising price and the scarcity of new machines mean that even secondhand mining rigs are now worth five times what they were a year ago so That's not really the reason why the price is going up, but it's a nice attempt. Getting your hands on a Bitcoin miner in Jaina these days is challenging. Official websites are out of stack. Second mining, second hand mining machines that were once sold as scrap metal are again popular and increasingly expensive. And according to Chinese media, equipment prices are only going to go up. Chinese media? I want to check these references. Click. The increased activity is evident in the surge in Bitcoin's overall network computing power, which reached a new high of 65 exahashes today. That is 65 billion million, right? Huh? Hold on, I'm reading this article about future shares in the M20S 68T or Shenma M20S. These are ASICs. I, I believe a- that an exahash is billion million, but I could be wrong. It could be a it could be a million million. Which would be twelve zero? No. Exa is above Peta, right? It's above Peta. Peta, Peta is a uh, thousand terabytes. So is... Exa is a thousand thousand terabytes. So a million petabytes. Terabytes, sorry, a million terabytes, right? A million terabytes, and a terabyte, and a terabyte is, is uh, what's past a billion? Trillion? Trillion, yes. So it's a trillion. No, it's a million trillion is an exabyte. A million trillion? A million okay. trillion. Thank you, sir. Uh, hooked on math were for me. 
a million trillion hashes per second. 65, wow, dude, think about that for a second. 65 million trillion hashes per second. It's fast. I'm going to go type that. I'm going to go type that shit right now. I'm going to type that shit in the Slack and see what everybody thinks about it. I wonder how these people in China are profiting from buying these expensive miners that were originally sold pretty cheaply not too long ago. Oh, interesting. The flood season affects people's ability to mine in China. I never thought about that. Mm. When is the problem mining? Where are they mining? Wow, man. I just went to deep thought about 65 trillion million and I couldn't even. Do you know how many times you would die before you could count to that? One million trillion, not two million. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, Zhang Wenchen, director of sales at Shin Ma Mining Machinery, told Chinese news site Blockchain that he predicts it will reach over 100 exahashes by the end of this year. Jesus. Oh, quintillion. It's an exahash. Well, well, I mean, that's it. We have no more news. We're just going to kick it now. So if you guys are done caring about the news, you can roll out. But now Jesse and I are just going to hang out. So. I need to figure out what happened to this ETH domain that I got. It was a really good one, too. So Taurus has created a simple and secure gateway to the centralized ecosystem via Google or Facebook OAuth logins. That just seems like a terrible idea, but. Ooh. Let us wrap up. Yeah. So if you're a fan of the show, tell us personally on the street. Here's Jesse's address. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Um, join the Slack. Go to the bitcoinpodcast.com and join the Slack. I know there's no just the headers.com because this is a headline show for the Bitcoin Podcast Network, which was originally created under the URL of the bitcoinpodcast.com. But you can go to the bitcoinpodcast.network if you like. Um, you can also go to the store. Right now, we're having a competition. Uh, if you use the coupon code Andreas, you can get a T-shirt or a beanbag cover uh, replacement. Replacement? Um, yeah, if you have a beanbag. Oh, oh no, 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 no! What does the coupon do? I, th I thought oh, the coupon, the coupon was a coupon replacement. Oh, the coupon gives you 10 percent off oh, on okay. everything in the store. Oh, uh, right now, Corey and I are having a competition. Corey and I get in debates all the time, and after every show. You can buy a D is an idiot shirt or a Corey is an idiot shirt to show your support for who is the better debater. In fact, the winner would be the master debater. Wow. Um, excuse me. Said wow. Why? Why? <laughs> Anyways, um. Jesse, I need to, I'm trying to remember a word. It's like, a, um, what is it like if you have like a chaotic, chaotic situation? Um, starts with a C. It's like, it's like a synonym for chaos. It starts with the C. It's, it kind of sounds like clam. Not a catastrophe. No, not a catastrophe. Uh, it sounds like the word clam. It's like clam. It's not mm. the word clam, but it's like cull. Calamity? 
Calamity. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. I got you. I got you Damn so it. fucking good. Damn. <laughs> like Black uh, Cartman. That's it, baby. Uh, that's it for the show. <laughs> fucking baited. <laughs> uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this week's Just the Headers. You weren't supposed to have two this week, but uh, shit happens. So... <laughs> God, uh, that's it, man. Jesse, you got anything you want to tell people besides where you're selling your pre-workout gummies? Oh, dude, I got to figure out packaging. Uh, this Canadian dude I was playing Counter Strike with was educating me on selling stuff on Amazon and getting packaging, um, done like as far as labeling and everything done uh, in China through like Al- Alibaba and stuff. So, I'm I'm trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah, if you figure I'll this definitely. out, dude. How do I become a Reg A plus investor? Well, here's the here's the thing, right? I'm only doing like a first small batch of like twenty, right? Twenty mm-hmm. little tubs, and I'm not really sure what I'll have to charge on each to meet like I know how profits much for compensating for shipping costs and packaging costs and all the chemicals that go into it, and then the uh, and then that's not including you know labor uh, of making it and the process. It takes like a few days to dry. To I got uh, formula up here in my head. Okay, well, maybe, maybe we can figure it out. Just, but yeah, just talk to me. I'll let you know <laughs> how much the, how how much you need to charge for this. Well, realistically, pre workout tubs for like about thirty to fifty servings go for anywhere between. We're gonna it talk depends about on it right the now, after the show. Uh, <laughs> play. <laughs>